The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to have Shane Smolian as our guest at 930. And what we're going to do today is take a look at the German DAX and the FTSE like we usually do. And as you can see here, they are certainly not making the same patterns that we're seeing in our stock market. These markets are already starting to roll over. Now, the Fed announcement yesterday, uh, changing a strategy a bit. Still relatively bullish to the stocks, but things are changing a little bit out there, folks, so we need to pay attention. I'm going to give you two cents worth here today. It's going to be covered more extensively uh, in the newsletter this weekend, giving you the actual, you know, the really key numbers uh, to pay attention to as far as standard deviations. But the one that is really going to uh, be very, very important uh, from our perspective of trading here, which is the largest of uh, – Actually, it's the second largest of all the commodity markets. It's the Treasury bond. And as you'll notice here, uh, we had that strong resistance up there at the 61% retracement. We were saying that 83, 183 should be a pretty tough place. We got down to uh, 175 and change here, uh, just a little below the 61% retracement. You can see that the APCD pattern measures uh, right down to the 78% level, down about another point and a half. So if we break below that, and if we break below that, there is really big trouble in River City somewhere, folks. And remember, these folks over at the Fed are printing money, and uh, that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do, and we are technicians. We're to try to interpret what that means. But remember, they were giving us a real great song and dance of how interest rates were going to go to uh, a negative rates about uh, a month ago and look at them you know we're down we're down uh, let me see we're down we're down eight handles in the uh, in the treasury bonds you know that's not a warm cushy feeling if you're long so let's pay a close attention to that now let's talk just a tiny bit here about the stock market okay let's just get this up here i'm going to post the big daddy rabbit the one that's been running the whole thing this is a nasdaq hey folks this is this is technical stuff uh, not not mysterious or anything, but look at the low we made back in November. Okay, then we rallied up into February, January, February. Then the virus hit us. Um, and then you'll see the market broke all the way down and it stopped exactly at the 78% level within just a few points at 66.30. Now, that's an important number. We know that and the market just exploded to the upside and has been up. We've only had... Uh, three red bars uh, during the whole month, and they, those were just minor. I mean, they weren't even corrections. <laughs> so uh, this is what we're looking at. Now, if you'll look at that top black bar there, you'll see that it measures up to the 1.618 expansion at 12,200. And uh, actually, the number is 12,218. It's about 300 handles from where we are right now. We could easily make that. But uh, we are getting in an area where uh, we are what we called overbought. And I'll just give you – and look, look, boys and girls, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. I'm not a spring chicken. But I've looked at thousands of charts. I don't think there's anybody out there that has looked at as many charts as I have other than a computer. But uh, if, you'll, if you'll just take a look at this one here, look, look how strong it is from the, the March 23rd low. Just straight up. I mean, it's just a, basically a vertical line. It's it's around a almost a, a 78 degree uh, 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 what do you call it slope, which in which in itself is just almost unbelievable. You can see that no other slope on this chart. You can go back as far as you want, but no other slope measures with that velocity. Now we know that what markets that go up, markets that go up do come down. We do know that. We've seen that over the the period of the last uh, you know 150 years. We've watched that. So here's where we're standing now. This is the uh, – well, I didn't come out the way I want. This is uh, – yeah, it's close enough. It's from Rich Anderson. I want to post it because it 
does tell a story of extreme uh, overbought situation here. You can see we're, we're, we're below where, we're, where we were in 1929. In other words, when the S&P is related to the MICI, uh, which is a European market. So we have, uh, you know, surpassed Europe by a long shot, and we are looking at areas that we haven't seen since 1929. Uh, which is important. And remember, I looked at this one yesterday also from our, our friend Rich Anderson, and that shows, you know, where we are in uh, stock prices compared to other markets. You'll notice here the red line, which is the value line, which is the broadest measure of all stocks. That's over five, I think it's 8,000 stocks, and it's a geometric uh, thing. And you'll notice it's a 61% retracement. The equal weighted S&P and the S&P are making new highs. The NASDAQ 100, you can see where it is. But look at the awesome, what they call it the awesome eight now. <laughs> it's no longer the FANG. They've added uh, Microsoft, Tesla, and something else in the thing here. So that's the awesome eight. And you can see, if you look closely, you can see a three drive to a pot, uh, top pattern in that last one, awesome eight. So it's just a matter of time before the old ball game is over, and then you're going to be able to see it, uh, what's going to happen. Now, you'll notice here in the the buying of the puts and calls. We're at, we're at levels now we haven't seen in a very long time in call volume. You'll see the put volume is very, very small, as it should be, because the market's going straight up. But the call volume is equal to where, or not equal quite yet to where we were back in uh, in, in 08 and stuff. But it, it's getting there. We'll have to wait and see. So the thing is, it hasn't really uh, turned yet. But let me explain one other thing that's important to you. And that is that when you are looking at your equity run, there is no place on that equity run where it says where your price is that picked high tick. There's no there's no place on there for that. So it's all BS trying to get the exact high tick. What you want to do is to find a place where you, you don't have to risk very much, whether it's a pattern or whether it's a ratio or a combination of ratios or moving averages or stochastics or any of those things. No matter what it is, all you have to do is determine what you're going to risk. You don't get a bonus for picking the high tick or the low tick. You do not get that. You know, so just remember, there's only one or two people that get that high price, and that's usually God, and she doesn't trade. Okay, I wanted to share a chart here from our friend Mr. Winsky. We haven't had him on for a while. Maybe he'll be free one of these months. Uh, I've got some free time in November. If you'll notice here, this is a just basically what it is. It's nothing more than the Andrews pitchforks, but you'll see that they line up really nicely. Now, if we if we roll over and close above 34, excuse me, 3520, it's going to bust out above that red line, which was really bullish. But there's also a possibility that this could be something, you know, really interesting. And remember, we're extremely overbought. And the NASDAQ is starting to show some signs of, uh, you know, a weakness. Over the, overnight, you know, the, the S&P would rally up about 20 points and the NASDAQ would still be down on the day. So that's still happening, but, you know, not, not too much. And we've got a couple other charts that we want to show you. I've got a break coming up, but we need to show those to you. And then we got to give, get you some information on um, some of these other commodities that are rocking and rolling really big. But here's a chart that I think is really interesting. I don't have any way of proving it at all, but this was sent by someone who's very smart. We'll be right back and talk about this next chart. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of uh, the market uh, compared to the uh, South Sea Island um, uh, what did we call it? mania? Okay, and I, I don't frankly know whether this is correct or not, but uh, you know we know that Tesla has made that type of a pattern. Now you'll notice here that uh, I'm not sure that this is even valid. All I know is that when markets go straight up like this, they come straight down. Look what happened to it. You know, way back uh, when, you know, just back a few months ago here. Well, that was back in 2016. It went from 400 to 150. And now we we're up to around 2300 or something, I think, today in Tesla. So it's just a matter of time, you know. But like I mentioned, you don't get a, uh, you don't get a, what you call a, uh, uh, a really good spot to, uh, uh, to enter unless you got a nice pattern. That's what I'm looking at. And I wanted to share a chart with you from Mr. Z that's really important here about the uh, gold market. You can see here that uh, we've made these higher bottoms in gold in here. We just got down to uh, 1909 the other day. Uh, 1908.50 was the exact number. We had a buy in there at 1909. We're trading at 1965 right now, I believe. Now, we really need to get above the 78% level, which is up around uh, 1980. No, it's higher than that. It's up around 19. No, it hit the 78% level, 1974. And if we can get above 1975 today, uh, and especially 1987, we got a chance for some really good action here uh, on the long side of gold and with the fed doing what they're doing it's just a matter of time folks they're playing with funny money and it's just going to be a matter of time whether it's going to happen or not now we've had some really big moves happening in some of these markets i wanted to share with you we owe a lot to our friend mr z and some of the other folks in the den marshall and a few others that have been very very bullish the uh the grain complex you'll notice we had that the beautiful uh, Gartley pattern forming there in early August. You can see it there. It was a long trend uh, from the bottom in April. You see it touched that line so many times, and it made a beautiful ABCD Gartley exactly at the 61% retracement, and we've rallied, uh, you know, well over, well, just about a dollar 
a dollar a bushel. And here's where we are right now. We are right at, as you can see, a major 78% retracement here in the soybeans. Now, everything is, uh, you know, perfect for the uh, beans to go higher with the crops going like this. So there's got to be some water coming in here to the uh, uh, grain, into, into these uh, farming areas to keep the, uh, the farmers from getting into their fields. And that means the yields would be less, I would believe. I don't have no, any idea what's happening with the Chinese uh, contingent as far as trade or anything like that. But this has been a beautiful pattern. It's completed the ABCD at the 78% level. So hold on here just a second here. And I wanted to see what's happening here. Uh, hold on just a second here. I want to see where we are. Okay. Okay. Now, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about a couple other of these that look pretty good that uh, we've been watching very closely. And again, the folks at uh, the guys in the den at TFNN do a great job of highlighting some of these and we try to follow through with those uh, in the 24-7 uh, uh, level. If you remember, uh, we, we took a small loss in wheat the first time we bought it, and then we bought it again at 497, and that's also moved quite a bit. It's moved up about 55 cents. We're approaching the 61 and 78% levels uh, right now. So the ABCD structure on this, folks, takes it up another uh, 28 cents up to uh, uh, 576. So this is telling us that the, whatever the Fed is doing, folks, they're pumping money into it. And that's the thing you have to remember, that when they're doing that, you know, it makes your dollars worth less. And that's one of the reasons why the U.S. dollar is in such critical level here, because we go below that, that uh, key level that we watch, which is, I believe... Uh, 9181. If we get below that, boy, we're in big trouble as far as the U.S. dollar. I mean, you won't notice it, and you can't travel hardly anymore, so you won't notice it here in the United States. But you're going to, people across the world will notice it because our goods are going to be cheaper, and people will be able to, uh, you know, buy them cheaper, and it's going to make a, a drain on inflation. So, those are the the key things to, you know, pay close attention to. Now, let's take a look at the corn market here because here's another one that was uh, brought to us by our good friends in the den. Uh, we were lo looking at that 1.27 expansion level. You went down and made new lows, and you stayed there for seven trading days at uh, 320, and boom, away you went. Uh, 320, you went up to the 50% level. You went to the 61% retracement level. You backed off to that 382 level, which we... We always mention that if you get that uh, and it, it stops there and it turns, that's really a, a heck of a signal. And you can see the ABCD structure on this takes you to 362, and we're within, I mean, we're with a couple of pennies of that. We're trading at 359 uh, last night. So it, this is another one that is acting extremely bullish. So these are some of the things that, you know, we do in the 24 7 letter, letter is to try to alert you to what these patterns look like. It's going to be up to you, of course, to decide how much you have to risk. But most of the risks are acceptable. They're within the range of about uh, three to five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars is about the most you have to risk. That would be in in crude oil and in gold. Gold a little bit more because now gold's getting a little crazy, folks. Because you know we've had the gold here. You'll notice. Hold on. Let's just get one second. Get this crazy. Yeah, and this is where we were the other day uh, when we were coming into the. Uh, this was on. This was on Wednesday morning. Because we had hit the, uh, we'd hit 1908.80, uh, 0840. We had a uh, order to buy it at 1909. We rallied all the way up to uh, 1987, and then came all the way back down to uh, 1928. And now we're trading around 1965. So we'll see whether that's going to be a uh, uh, Apple, 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 Apple. You know, uh, I think Apple's probably making. Let me, let me. Since we've got a second here before, thank you for bringing that to my attention because Apple is actually acting a tiny bit bearish, folks. I know it's hard to believe that you could say something like that, but let's just take a quick look at the 15-minute chart. Uh, I, and I'll, I'll, by golly, it's still looking bearish to me, and I don't know if that's right or not, but. Uh, I don't know what the last price on it is, but let's just look at the price here. We'll just, just do this together, draw the numbers in, and you'll see here we're trading just a tad above the 61% retracement. Let's get this uh, up here so everybody can see it. The low that we made on the 27th was a 78% retracement of the low 
on the 25th. That was exactly 78% level. We're trading at uh, 505 this morning. Uh, the 61% retracement is 504 and a half. We're trading at 504.79. The 78% level is up at 507. And so this is at, you know, you've had now two days where it hasn't made, uh, you know, a screaming new high. In fact, it made its high, folks, way back on the 21st. And if you just look at this, this is not acting, not acting as bullish as uh, the news is. So maybe this is the first sign that there could be a chink in the armor. Because take a take a look at this in the uh, take a look at this. This doesn't uh, this doesn't look you know crazy bullish. That high we made on the 27th was nothing more than a 78 uh, percent level. Stay tuned, folks. We got Shane Smolian coming up. Talk to us about uh, some of the markets and COVD. We'll be right back. Larry Pezzavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have on the line Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Good morning, Shane. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Larry. How are you? You've got the mic, my friend. Give us the best you've got. We'd like to know about COVD. Are we going to die or are we going to live? I think we're going to be okay. Uh, first Good. of all, I'd like to congratulate you on that Wednesday live trading seminar. I think that's really, really impressive what you do. 
to put it on the line like that live. So good job with that. Thank it's you. really difficult to do. Um, okay, so let's get started here. So first of all, I'm going to talk about COVID here. Uh, this is just a global overview of the biweekly change. So this shows you the hot spots in the world on COVID. So right now the hot spots are not is not the United States. You can see the United States here in the light blue. Uh, it's really mainly over towards Europe and Africa. There are some southern South America countries, but really you have you know France, Italy, uh, and areas of Africa over here. And um, the screen share is not coming through. Okay. Just give me one second. The screen share is not sharing here. Just hold on. Welcome to the world of technology. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Start sharing. Can they see it now? Uh, they're going to tell us in a second. Uh, yeah, I think they do now. Uh, no, I guess not. We're not. Uh, we're not getting it. I don't know what the uh, what the problem is, but uh, huh. This is really strange because you're the technical expert uh, on everything. So, hmm. Hmm. what's uh, what strategy two, my friend? Strategy two is to talk like a regular radio show. That too. So, <laughs> remember if that. Come up, that'll be great, and we'll get them. Maybe with the first break here, we'll get them. So, just uh, tell us what you're seeing right now with the COVD. It's very important. Okay, so the co essentially what's happening with COVID is that. Um, the COVID numbers are down in the United States, and that's that's a good sign. And it's showing up mostly in in Europe right now. Uh, and these and the way that these these viruses work is there's hot spots, and they they go up and they come down. And the uh, the biweekly change on the United States is really coming down. I mean, we had a little peak in June and July, but uh, it was nothing like it was in in April uh, when we had that the big peak uh, when we had we really had twenty like twenty one percent of the people. 0.5% of the people testing positive around uh, um, April the 11th. Um, we got to a low of 4.5% of the people testing positive in June, and then it only went up to 8.8% in that recent peak. Uh, and the reason why the numbers look so high is because you're testing more people. But if you do it as a percentage of people that test positive, we only jumped back up to about 8.8%. So think about that from the peak. The peak was 21.5, and then you came down, and then the next peak was 8.8%. .8. The latest, uh, where we are right now, we're at 6.3%. So that's pretty good. I mean, the, the low was 4.5%. We're at 6.3% positive. So that's that's pretty good. I mean, I mean it's not where we want to be. Uh, obviously, we want to be lower. But um, certainly, it's not anywhere near where it was. Uh, we're, 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 we're four times lower than we were in April. So uh, that's a good sign. All right. So... Um, Next thing, let's talk about uh, the fear and greed index. So I, I usually talk about that. That's getting pretty high. That's getting up to about 76%. And, um, you know, it did reach levels in the high 90s uh, in January, you know, that January, February uh, topping zone. Uh, but this is, I would say this is to be handled with some caution here. Um, you know, it, it can go higher, but it's definitely, in this rally, this is the highest that it's been. And... Um, so it's getting up there. So for those of you who watch sentiment, it's just something to pay attention to. Now the uh, the S and P, I talked about the concept of three headed dragon that we have to watch, which is the astro uh, astrology, which is what you talk about with the Bradley uh, last week. Uh, the Fed juice, is, which is what I track, and then also the dollar juice, which is how the dollar is affecting the markets, because the dollar has an inverse relationship to the markets and to gold. Uh, anything priced in dollars is going to go up when the dollar starts to fall. So um, that definitely has a role, and it's indirectly related to the Fed juice. I've seen them both go up together too, but uh, they're not exactly the same thing. So I put them as different topics. Now, the S&P uh, is uh, reaching zones of very high levels in terms of RSI. Um, this is one – Thing that I do watch just because the R, the S and P is not really a flashy index like gold or copper or some of these other commodities that can zoom up really high and then zoom down really low. The S and P typically doesn't like to see levels in the 90s, and uh, it's at 93 right now. So the last time we saw a level of 93 was on June the 8th, which was right near that lunar eclipse high. 
I don't know if you remember that the lunar eclipse came in and then the market sold off after it. Um, but um, we are getting up to levels that are, I would say, are somewhat concerning. Um, now, I don't see any changes yet on the Fed juice, but, you know, the, that can change in a couple of days. But right now, the Fed juice is still pointing higher. And the uh, I have a new dollar Fed, uh, dollar Fed juice hybrid, which is a combination of the dollar juice and the Fed juice. And that's also in a buy. So those are still pointed up. But there's enough con concern. It, to me, the 93 number is getting it's getting to be a little bit frothy. And I think you noticed on Apple today that that was looking a little bit a little bit uh, fatigued. In, and I think one of the reasons is that the S&P, the S&P is not responding as strongly to the dollar as it usually does today. So that's probably why you're seeing that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm watching this S&P. There's a few signs of evidence that that I think could be pointing to some possible fatigue, but I, I don't see it quite yet on the Fed juice. So I do track the uh, the U.S. dollar. And believe it or not, I actually have that possibly going into a buy today uh, on, a, on a one day. So that to me, that's the first sign that there could possibly be some issues because uh, with a 93 RSI, I think you have to really look for any any little clue that could give you some evidence that we could be seeing a top. Uh, and we hadn't seen that for days. I mean, all week I had had this thing pointed up. And then, you know, last Friday we had a, a long at the close or an upside at the close just for a one day play. Um, but um, um, anyway, but now we're starting to see some issues. I think the dollar, like I said, it could be trying to go into a buy today. Now, I know that sounds contrary to what the Fed is doing. The Fed is trying to push the dollar down. Uh, yesterday in their meeting, uh, everybody knows this, but I'll just recap. They they talked about a new strategy for targeting inflation. When I say targeting inflation, I don't mean that they are taking inflation and um, trying to to stop it. They're actually taking inflation, or they're trying to increase inflation to keep it around a around a two point two percent, uh, like a two percent uh, level. So that means that they could actually go over two percent for multiple months. So the one thing about that is that of course this is bullish for equities metals and currencies but they didn't really say how they were going to do it uh and i was really looking for that in the meeting yesterday i was looking for them to talk about some policy that they could use to do that now the fed has rolled out all these new tools during covid and we know that we have all these credit facilities popping up there's a, there's a primary credit facility which they purchased these new newly issued uh uh, corporate bonds and they also have the secondary market which is existing uh, we know that this week they're rolling a lot of money into that market so it could be that this is how they're trying to to stabilize the markets and hey, let's take a little break here and uh, see if we can get that technical problem fixed and we'll be back with Shane in about five minutes we'll be right back with you. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leverage ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. And as we would be expected, we are back in business. We've got game. Go ahead, my friend. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, you know what they say, Larry. When you can't fight with a sword, fight with a stick. When you can't fight with a stick, fight with your hands. <laughs> when you can't fight with your hands, then, well, my friend, you're in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So, <laughs> you know, I, let my, I let my sister do all the fighting in the family, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, okay, we try to do the best with what we can do here. All right, so here's – hopefully you can see the S&P chart now. And um, this, is, uh, this is what I was talking about. Uh, now, the Fed juice is still pointed up um, down here along with the dollar juice. But we are seeing a 93 here on the RSI. That's a concern to me. So, so when I see a 93, I'm looking for any evidence now to consider some type of a, a short opportunity or a downside. Uh, so the first sign that I do have here, uh, first of all, the planetary speed, in speed index is in a cell, and the cat master goes into a cell today. So those are two clues now, that, and along with this 93. Um, I, I don't consider these necessarily evidence, the astro, but they are tendencies of the market to try to turn. Then the 93, I consider that evidence. Um, the next thing that I would consider evidence would be any tape move. I don't see that in the Fed juice. Uh, but the U.S. dollar is is tier, and I do track this. And uh, it is moving lower today. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So the Fed is pushing this lower. So, and, of course, this caused gold and the metals to jump up again because they're very sensitive to the dollar. So the dollar wobbles down, gold, silver, and the currencies jump up. So this is this game that they've been playing. But I do have it actually going into a buy today at the close. So that that's that's some evidence to me. And in my mind, that's some evidence that there could be some issues here uh, with the S&P. So uh, at least on a short term. On, on a long term, I'm not really so concerned. But on the short term right now, that's showing me that there could be some problems. So um, this is a chart of gold just to, to show uh, what we're looking at with gold. Now, gold is interesting because it went up and it made that high. Uh, our cat, our cat signal, which is the cat. It's just for those of you who don't know, this is a, a combination. It's a combined astro and transits. It's like one, it's a one-stop signal. It's been very accurate with gold this month. All of these numbers are published at the beginning of the month. These purple arrows. So it's been calling these turns like almost to the day. Uh, and so you know, every month isn't this good, but this month has been spectacular in terms of call, making these calls. But the one thing that I want to talk about is the Fed juice, which is the red. The red. So the, the the cat, by the way, the cat master signal. That's a medium term uh, signal. So I say that's a medium term range. The, the the Fed juice is a long term range, and this Fed juice has really been in a, a pretty clean sell here. So every time that this this gold has jumped up and failed and jumped up and failed, this was yesterday. Of course, today it's up because of the dollar. But it's essentially follow the path of this Fed juice on the longer term. So I think gold. 
it has its chance to make a last hurrah here for the next few days. There is a little bit of an uptick here in the CAT. But then next month, uh, I talk about the specific turning dates. We do have a lot of headwinds coming in on the metals uh, from multiple areas. And I know you have a lot of uh, other astro forecasters on here, but the one thing I do want to talk about for people is the Mars retrograde. That is bearish on metals. Metals typically don't like it, um, particularly around the period when that happens. And uh, it, it has been associated with some major tops uh, in, in the metals or, or some major turning points. So we got to watch that. That's something that that's coming up in mid-September. Uh, but the seasonal pattern also gets much more difficult in uh, September. So if this Fed juice is still just surging lower when we're getting into these negative seasonals, I think it's going to be tough for gold to get up. Now, let's bring in the cluster bomb known as the Fed, which is – trying to destroy the dollar with this inflationary uh, new inflationary policy. I mean, their whole point of uh, doing this is to take the dollar and push it down. Okay. When I say cluster bomb, I don't mean, I just mean it's like a random variable. Okay. So if the fed can succeed in pushing the dollar down, it will, it will try to stabilize the metals and stabilize the markets. One of the things about the dollar is the dollar is coming into a very positive seasonal pattern starting now going all the way through about late November. And I have this outline, that exact turning points, I have that on the currency uh, letter. But the point is that the currencies are, the dollar is coming into a positive seasonal. So it's possible that the Fed saw that and they were like, we need to really come out and say something now to try to depress this dollar because we know we're coming into a positive seasonal on the dollar. So it's possible that that's one of the motives behind what they're doing. I think they watch all of these charts. I think they're very keen about what's going on there, but some of the smartest people in the world that work there. So I think this could be Jane, part of the issue. Jane, yeah. can I inter interrupt you for just a second? Sure. Uh, th they don't watch mine at all. They might watch yours, but they don't watch mine. <laughs> I just want to make that clear, okay? Well, according to a person, an unknown person, which I won't name, uh, that's very prominent in this field, has told me that most of the major banks own these, this, these softwares. So it's, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they track it, and to some level, if they know generally when these seasonal patterns occur. So um, this is the Fed use on the gold. It's just been steadily falling. So you know the, the general trend has been down in spite of these dollar spikes that we keep seeing day to day. But the, again, these spikes are really just fluctuations in the dollar. Uh, and I don't. I wouldn't take these as uh, necessarily gold moves. These are just reactions. So this is what I said when we have this three-headed dragon. You're dealing with all of these things simultaneously, and it's it's, it's really tough to get a call on it. But I think the Fed juice is more or less stable, uh, calling this to be right now calling it lower. But I, like I said, there is a little bit of a possibility here that the metals could hook up. They're, they could try with the seasonals. So we really have to see. But once you start getting into early September, it's really – you know, gold really needs to make a strong bid now. If it's going to get higher, it really needs to make a case for it now because uh, it turned it turned way ahead of those negative seasonals. So, to me, this this looks more bearish than, than bullish right now on this picture. So, um, so we talked about the Bradley, and I know you talked about it on your show last week. Uh, one of the things I, I do want to talk about with the Bradley is this is the Bradley here. It did make a high uh, last week, and it is falling. But one of the things that I wanted to point out was I did a webinar on this last weekend, is that the Bradley tends to work very well when the Fed is strong, and it tends to not and, and not work so well. Sorry, sorry, I said that backwards. The Bradley does not work well when the Fed is strong, and it works very well when the Fed is weak. So I did a chart where I I I I, I separated the Bradley. On, I did the blue. When the Fed is strong, and I did the red when the Fed is weak, and uh, it's just to show you that the incredible differences here. So uh, when the Fed is strong on the left side, left hand side here, the Bradley is this blue line here, uh, and you can see the Bradley. This was 2000, early 2019. It was falling most of this time, right when the Fed was strong, but yet the market went the other way. The market went up during this time, uh, and it kind of ignored the Bradley. But when the Fed got weak, and they got weak right around uh, beginning of January, believe it or not, right around right before this COVID hit, um, the market quickly caught up to the Bradley. Uh, and so uh, when the Fed is weak, the Bradley tends to be very good with forecasting these moves. Uh, when the Fed is strong, the Bradley 
on the downside tends to not be as accurate. So th I think this is what we're seeing here, which is why the market just kept going up uh, on this Bradley. So right now we're seeing a case where uh, we have a, a market going up and we also have a strong Bradley, uh, I'm sorry, strong Fed with a strong Bradley. So they both moved up together. The question is, you know, is this going to be able to, to call a turn? And, you know, with a strong Fed, it's going to be kind of tough. I agree with that 100%. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, folks. We've got to pay a few bills. 877-927-6648. Keep those cards and letters coming in. The, the lights are lit, but you can still get in if you hurry. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. You want to finish up these last couple of minutes and let the folks know how they can reach you? Sure. Uh, well, Real quick, I just want to share an intraday transit chart. I have this on my Uranian service, which is really an advanced astrology type of a service. But this is these are intraday transits, and they typically track the S&P. This is August 28th, which is today, just to make sure. Yeah, that's today. Okay. Don't want to give you the wrong day here. Uh, but this is uh, – the transits really it shows that we should have been coming down overnight, which essentially it did. It kind of faded overnight. And then it shows a peak probably somewhere around – I would say this last peak is right around – probably around like 130, 140 today. So according to this chart, we should have some type of a peak and it's starting around 12, somewhere around that time, there could be a peak zone in here. And then, um, you know, if, if it is, we do get a short on Monday, um, 
I will be curious. To, I'll, I'll let the subscribers know about that by the end of the day. But um, the one, only one thing I would say about trying to, to, to short early on a Friday is sometimes at the end of the day, they go crazy with a short covering and they spike up and all this stuff. But just wanted to share that transit chart with everybody uh, just as a it just as a little bonus there. Uh, if you guys want to reach me, uh, if you're just tuning in now, I'm Shane Smolian from Wolf Trader Futures. And um, you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. Uh, it's www.WolfTraderFutures.com. And uh, we write newsletters over there. And uh, we we have six newsletters, actually. I have S&P Metals, Energy, Currency, Cryptocurrency, and Uranian Astrology. Uh, these are monthly newsletters, and I also do daily updates. So, like, if you tune in every day around 2 o'clock, you'll get an update on uh, the specific markets that you're looking at. And I have, you know, updates and comments about Fed juice and the cat signals. So every day I give – I kind of touch base with the subscribers and just kind of let them know where we are uh, with the market. So uh, if, you, if you're interested in something like that, come check it out. We have a seven-day free trial. Or if you just want to talk with me, I'm, I'm available on – there's a Wix chat. You can just chat with me if you have questions. I'll be more than happy to answer questions, and I always try to tailor, you know, features for the service to whatever subscribers ask for. I try to, I try to fit it in to the service. So, hey, thanks for joining us, my friend, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll have you on soon. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Take care. You have bet. a great Chase, please, WolfTrader.com. We'll see you all Monday, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Yeah.